Hey guys, welcome back to part number five of ICM's 48th scale B26 B Marauder. So last week we got the main assembly done. This week we're going to do one of my favorite parts, which is painting. So we're going to start with priming, paint, painting the silver, um, that natural metal finish, and then print some evasion stripes, and also that um, yellow at the front for that crazy um, hairy bird decal thing. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey, welcome back. I uh, hope you had a great week and into painting, which is one of my favorite parts of um, the build process. So sunk a ton of time in this one. I mean, many hours getting this thing put together, looking good. Hopefully, you know, all these seam lines and stuff will be disappeared and it's going to go pretty well. So left, you know, left the turret off, the engines off, um, all the, some of the glass work off and just plugs it with foam um, because these are add on at the very end, I think, and having to mask and paint around it. So just a reminder, we're going to go with the third scheme, which is the big hairy bird, basically natural metal finish with some yellow um, with your mask and prepare at the front there and some pretty cool invasion stripes too. So excited about this one. It's going to be an interesting um, paint job for sure. So a few little steps. We're going to prime it first and then we're going to paint the silver Then we're going to paint the, um, the yellow and then we paint all these invasion stripes on the back and um, the wings. So a lot going on here. Now, done a few things to see to start with. And firstly, painted all the glass work over the frames with the interior color, which was, I think we're using the 58 guns, the interior green. Um, so that's, so just, if you do look for glass, you'll be able to see, um, that'll be what you see inside the green. Um, and obviously we're gonna paint over the top of that. Also, because we did a whole bunch of sanding and um, you know filling, that kind of stuff, just took some Vallejo airbrush cleaner, which is a nice mild airbrush cleaner, um, put on some paper towel and just wiped over the whole aircraft um, to get rid of any dust um, and that kind of stuff to make it a really nice finish, you know, well, good canvas to paint on. So I got rid of all the dust. Um, you can use an anti-static brush too, but I just find a little bit of mild airbrush cleaner, just wiped over it, um, does a great job. Also, heads up, when you're preparing things like the turrets or any clear parts, if you get any paint on there, again, or canopies, Vallejo airbrush cleaner. Um, again, I don't have a bottle. I just decanted the leftovers in this little jar right here. <laughs> but um, again, with a, using that with a um, Q-tip and just wipe around that glass work very carefully. It should remove the paint. And um, yeah, top tip. So, all right, so we're in good shape. So first thing we're gonna do is prime it. Now, I always use black anyway, but especially using metal. So Mr. Surfacer 1500 black which is mixed 50-50 with Rapid Thinner, which let me go get that for you real quick. I love the Rapid Thinner because it just dries pretty much instantly. I mean, I painted a Super Hornet, well, that's your Legacy Hornet, and um, with four different colors. And I did the whole thing in one evening, and within 20 minutes, I was masking, doing next color with no issue at all. So Rapid Thinner paired with this is the combination I like to go with, about 50-50, and just gonna spray the whole thing, and um, yeah. Put a mask on because there'll be tons of paint flying, put the air spray booth going, and it'll take a while. Doing stages properly. And also be careful where you hold this thing too. Um, I made a mistake the other day of putting my finger right through the window. Luckily it didn't go all the way through. Um, but yeah, so just be careful. I think this part is good to hold, or maybe like the wing is a good place to hold it as well. All right, cool. Enough waffling. Let me get this primer down and then we can see how we're looking. And yeah, there might be some more filling we might need to do. So yeah, primer, primer first, I'll be right back. All right, so I got the black down, changed my 0.2 to a 0.3 airbrush um, needle size, and it went down a lot easier, quicker. I'm basically just kind of hosing it on, to be honest with you. Um, so it looks really good, I'll say, um, overall, looking around. But if you catch a light there, you can see it's still a little bit raised, needs a little bit of sanding on top here. Um, a few parts from where we did the filler and stuff, but no gap, just a little bit of a sand right here needed. And on the other side, I already sanded it back, um, just there. So that should be good, hopefully. So it's just a little sand with a sanding sponge, um, across here and, um, we should be good to go. Um, the front here too, as well, kind of see there just needs flattening back a little bit. So I'll take care of those parts and shoot it again with the airbrush, um, 
touch back up again and then we should be ready to add the silver. All right, you can see we're making progress here. So the silver went down beautifully. So as I mentioned, it's LP11. And spoiler alert, I think I even used about half a jar for the whole thing. So sprayed the whole thing, um, did half, half last night, let it dry for a couple of hours at the other side. And then I painted the wheel wells. Now, options, two options in here. You can do like the interior color, which we've done for the whole model, which is basically guns 58, or you can paint them silver. Now, because the whole thing's silver, I kind of like the contrast of the green. So um, this, this I thought this way around was easier. Paint silver first, and then just throw some masking tape around the outside and just hose in, well not hose in, but paint the um, green. So that's what I've done. So let's kind of peel this off. And we're looking pretty good there. Now we've got a ton of stuff going on here. Obviously we've got evasion stripes. We're going to have yellow nose, all kinds of stuff. So, and that turned out pretty good. You see, I like the contrast on that. So if I flip over to the other side, you can see um, how we're looking too. And this is a really nice color. I think I, possible I kind of want to get away if I can do a whole model without any kind of clear coats because I kind of like this finish. Now, I did um, come back and rescribe some lines um, for sanding and stuff. They were kind of worn away. So, I get this bendy piece of metal, just put it over here in my P cutter. Trumpeter. I mean, there's all types, but I keep going back to the trumpeter one. And um, after I painted it, just ran these lines through um, again. Now, there's a couple of little bits here and there, like this piece and the nose, and maybe here, although the decal is going to cover it. Excuse my fingers I've got paint all over it obviously I'm painting right now um, so I think I want to um, fix those in the art perfection so I think I want to um, just sand that back a little bit more these parts and just repaint it um, again not 100% happy with it and I just you know put so much work into this I just want to make sure it's you know it looks good so I'm just going to take care of those few little spots sand it back which is messy work and um, I think you can take this off oh, I'll leave it on um, and um, I'll maybe here too actually just again, just touch up a few little areas and then um, paint it again and let it dry. And then we'll come back and um, beige and stripes and yellow front. All right, so let's talk yellow masky face stuff. And again, I apologize. I hate being on camera, but I spilled with paint on my hands, but I spilled a jar of XF54 all over me. So anyway so excuse my fingers i'll try to keep my hands out of view <laughs> um so the problem this guy is you know we've got some interesting shapes going on and you just got a mouth you got no like so they gave you masks for the they give you masks for the uh, other stuff you think hey it'd be nice if you at least give you a mask for this as well i mean but anyway so i have to create my own so let me kind of talk through logic how i've done it i'm sure it might be an easier way but this is how i kind of got by it so firstly i photocopied a decal sheet um, so photocopy the decal sheet and um, cut out the mouthpieces for decals because we've got to kind of got to get the, the mask to go around the mouth. So I'll cut the pieces out. Um, they kind of go like this way around. If you think about the bottom of the fuselage um, like that, if that's the other side. So I cut them out. And then what I did was I put it against the aircraft model and with some mask, put some blue masking tape behind it. Um, so imagine. Which way around are we doing here? Hang on a minute. So imagine that's the, um, this is the aircraft fuselage. I put some tape on it and actually I think it goes this way around. And just kind of, you know, offered up my, my decal, lined it all up where it would go. And then just drew on the bumps, like following the, um, you know, the guide here. Just kind of had tape on the fuselage, drew around where I think it should be, cut it out. And then from there, I kind of have my shape. I took my masking tape. Um, Paper. Now I use this for my Cricut machine, the Euromask 810, but you can also use Tamiya Kabuki tape or just even blue masking tape, right? But you want to do like a reverse. So what I did then was pretty much took my template, put it onto my sheet and drew around it and then cut it out to the reverse side. So, you know, use this part and this bit was cut out. Now on the other side, I just simply just turn it over and traced around the other side. So you had a mirror copy. So I did that with two masks and Da, da, da. Once I had the mask, then again with, with this lining up where a decal would go, I put the the mask on, and I know it has pulled some paint away underneath it, so I might need to touch up 
that kind of lined up where it would go on both sides. Sorry. And um, taped up yellow and sprayed it on. And there we go. So let's, again, I know it's going to take some silver away and touch up, but hopefully it's in the right spot. So when we do come back, once we're done painting with decals and line this guy up, it's going to fit, um, you know, right there. Oh, I'm not even on camera. There we go. When I put decal on, it's going to line up right like that, hopefully. We're going to, yeah, we'll see how we go. So that's the game plan, at least. Um, I just sprayed this a few minutes ago, so it's still wet. I think it needs another little coat of yellow just to kind of, um, yeah, it's a little bit blotchy. So I'm going to give it another coat of yellow, um, let it dry, and then take these masks off, and we'll see what we've got left over. And unfortunately, we won't know until later on when we put the decals on if they're in the right spot or not. But that's a quick kind of down dirty how I did it. So basically print, photocopied the um, the decals and then just with mask and tape kind of offered up against the aircraft, fuse large and drew around it and created my masks. So there we go. So hopefully it works. I guess we'll know, you know, later on. Um, so yeah, I'm going to um, spray another coat yellow real quick. Um, see if we get some more of this paint off my hands and um, we'll continue with the build. All right. So took the masks off and we're looking pretty good. There's a few little um, mar marks here and there. God, so big it's hard to get this thing in the camera. Um, but I'll just take chalk it down the weathering. I think it'll be good to go. Um, but yeah, fingers crossed that yellow, once we get the decal on, will line up. So onto invasion stripes. So we've got um, wings and we've got lower fuselage here. Do the wings first. Now, I've never done invasion stripes before. So a lot of firsts here. Never done a silver natural metal finished plane before. Never done invasion stripes. Um, invasion stripes. So I do know that um, 48 scale, it happens to be, each stripe happens to be a width of a 10 mil Tamiya tape, so a centimeter tape. So there's six stripes on each side, so I've marked it and measured it six centimeters. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically, you know, paint one color upper and lower, and then, which I'm going to paint a black first. I always like to look at white on top of black. So I'm going to do black all over. Uh, once that's dry, then we'll mask the black off, spray over the top. And then once we peel it all off, we should have the black and white stripes. Now, should know an invasion stripes. They'll sometimes just paint it with mops in the, on the airfield. That, so it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. So if you're slightly off with your lines and stuff, it, you know, that's perfectly fine. So I don't go too crazy, do too much at once. I'm going to do the wings first, let it all dry. And then we'll do the backs, back part of the fuselage afterwards. All right. So show you where I'm at with invasion stripes. So as I mentioned one width of these is of 10 mil Tamiya tape is the width of a line. So did all black, then just masked off the black, sprayed white. At the end, it's going to be green. So I want to spray green over white, not black. It's going to go down better. So double wide. <laughs> and then once the white's dry, I'm just going to cover the white up there. And we'll spray the last band green. Um, so there we go. Just a quick little update on the evasion stripes. All right, so we're done. Now, a ton of work. I know it's a shorter video, but painting and masking all this stuff, I mean, it was a ton. I mean, a lot of hours worth going into this, but um, looks good. Happy how it's turned out. Again, my first ever aircraft in natural metal finish, and the LP-11 um, really goes down nicely. Now, off camera, I did paint the, um, the front here, the cows, the engines go in, and um, you see here, that same dark green on the inner. So this one goes... This side is going to fall off. And um, this one goes this side, the dark green facing inwards. Like so. Um, but yeah, go down really nicely. Happy how it's turned out. Dark green on the front matches the invasion stripes. Striped on the back here too. And just fingers crossed, hopefully that decal lines up when we put it on. Um, we'll know very shortly. It does make me a little bit nervous. Um, as you can see, of course, these guys all bent. There's no way we get through a session, you know, painting this and building it without breaking these things off. Um, I don't know why they're molded in. It'd be better if they were separate, I think. But yeah, looking good. Now, I will note too is, you know, especially this silver color on the camera, you can pick out every single little floor and you can see a few little sink marks or seam lines or whatever. Um, in person, I look at it here. I don't see that. It's just on the camera. Um, so it is picking up all everything. You can see pretty much reflecting everything off it. But nonetheless, you know, it's not perfect not by any means, but I think it's looking really good. Once I've got those decals on, like I mentioned, I think it's really going to look awesome. So 
I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you for watching as always. You haven't done so already. Please hit the subscribe button and I'll be back next week where we'll get the deep. Well, no, I was going to say decal. No, next week we're actually going to do the, um, all the other parts like the, um, we're going to build the, paint the engines. We'll do the gear and the props and all that kind of stuff. So there we go. So we'll do that next week. So see you Friday. Have a great week.